Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, back with the one wheel, two wheels. Uh, Sunday afternoon, little ride. It's cold, four degrees Celsius. So yeah, uh, got a little chore to do. I need to go to a place called B and Q, which is a DIY store, and get myself some paint, some exterior wood paint. So when I moved into my property, there was an old wooden bench outside of uh, the back, well, just sort of in the back garden, let's say. And uh, yeah, it is knackered. But the other day I was at work and uh, a lovely old lady, um, she had some wooden bed slats in her front garden. And they're just sitting there rotting. And I said to her, I said, can I take those? She was like, yeah, sure, yeah, no problem. And then gave me a very confused, weird look as to say, what are you doing with them? And I explained to her that I've got this knackered old bench. I said, and they would be perfect. So yeah, chucked them in a van, brought them home, um, cut them all how they needed to be cut, only they're about eight inches too long. So, my fault, I should have paid closer attention to the bench and what I needed to do. So yeah, I need to uh, trim them all down by 8 inches or so. And then recut them so that they will fit the bench. And then drill them so that they've got holes in for the nuts and bolts to hold them to the bench. I don't know who that geezer was. Some geezer in a van just give me the biggest smile and the biggest thumbs up. I don't know what that was about, but he obviously loved the look, the day glow. But yeah. So we're off to B&Q to get some exterior wood paint so that when it's all cut to size and it's put together and it's all as it's supposed to be, come on girl, get out of the fucking way. Then, uh. I can uh, paint it up and make it look lovely. I also looked at uh, exterior metal paint so that the metal paint or the metal parts of the bench would look all lovely and fresh. But I am not paying the sort of money that they want for external metal paint. So the wood will look nice and fresh, but the metal will look retro. which is fine by me. Look at the Tesla boy! You have to be careful down this road because people in cars also filter down this road. So you have to watch as they come out of the roundabout to see if they're merging into the middle of the road. Because if they do, you really want to get the fuck out of the way, you know what I'm saying? That'd not be a good day. Head on onto a car at speed limit speeds, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, off to get me paint for me DIYs. Oh. Yeah, so we came this way before. This is where the bus lanes are. Um, just going a bit of a longer way round. Bit of a longer round, just to get a little ride in. Just because next weekend I can't go riding, I'm working, so I need to get in a bit of riding today. Just so that my mental well-being, what, just yeah, just so that my mental well-being can last for a couple of weeks without riding my bike. Because I believe, you know, for people that don't ride bikes, they obviously don't understand that this is a form of therapy. Like anything that you do that you enjoy, you know, it puts you in a better mood. It, it, it makes you feel good. 
and I think the freeness as well as the enjoyability of riding a motorcycle just clears your brain as well I was telling a mate that I was telling a mate that um, yeah when you ride a bike you know you, you pretty much have to concentrate on riding the bike so all them shitty thoughts that you've had tumbling through your brain they have to disappear because you need your concentration for the bicycle riding yeah I Babylon but I think that if you talk to a lot of bikers a lot of bikers probably chat shit while they're riding around to themselves and I just decided to uh, record it you know why not why not so I'm a an avid watcher of a guy called Angry D he's a YouTuber he's a he's a great guy uh, he makes me laugh and like I said the other day it's kind of part of the family the Bustolina family and uh, I said to him like a long time ago this was I, was I don't I can't remember whether it was in a comment or whether it was via email or whatever I said like you've not inspired me to uh, take up YouTube you've just inspired me to document my rides because he's had a few close calls he gets a bit moody he might smash a mirror but he doesn't do that anymore he's calmed down you know we all we all grow up <laughs> no offense mr d but yeah he's had a couple of accidents which i mean well, they're proper accidents you know they're, they're they're not the sort of accident that a lot of people would walk walk away from and the, the, yeah the geezer's made of rubber but yeah like i say he inspired me to document my rides just in case any crazy shit happens you know because it does it happens out here all the time so even on a little ride just to the local diy store i thought well i'll pop my recordings on and i'll uh, chat to you guys for a minute But yeah, this is a, a little part of uh, my hometown where uh, it's called Springfield and I did did look at a property up here when I had to move uh, a year or so ago and it was a newer style flat mate I don't know how people can even I mean me as a single guy with a whole load of shit that I've collected over the years I could not live in that property there was one cupboard for storage right that one cupboard is not anywhere near big enough for all my took so yeah I didn't move in there but luckily yeah property come up and yeah it's perfect just needs some loving you know some loving so that's what I'm doing today I'm gonna sort out me wood for me bench and then I'm gonna get me ladder out and put a new bulb in the sensor light so that them little thieving scoundrels they can be lit up when they come looking for my bicycle you know what I'm saying because they have been they have done so I think it was one Sunday or Saturday one afternoon I'd come home from a ride and I'd left the bike outside uh, and this little uh, I say little he was probably about 16 in between 16 and 18 16 20 I suppose a ute a young ute he come riding up the drive on the bicyclette and he spun round and he grabbed my throttle and gave it a twist now the bike weren't even on so it didn't make no noise it didn't do nothing but I'm sitting in my living room and I'm looking out the window at him and I can see exactly what he's doing but then he disappears and then the next thing I know I see my neighbours running down the, the drive after some other little ute that had been in their private car park so I walked out and it's like what the hell's going on and I explained to him that one of the little utes had been twisting me throttle and it just so happens that my um, next door neighbour is a ex-motorcycle police officer she's a lovely lady and uh, yeah she said well that is in fact illegal 
She said it is uh, tampering with a motor vehicle, so you could press charges if you wish to. I'm like, well, no, I don't want to do all that. So yeah, I didn't. But then, what was it, a, a couple of nights later, they've got a ring doorbell and a, a bit of security around their gaff. And uh, yeah, uh, she caught someone at like two in the morning trying to get into the garage. And then a couple of weeks later, a couple of little utes, they uh, jumped my garden fence and broke it. And she said, oh, they were trying to get into the garage. They've been tr trying to get into our shed. It's like, it's obvious that they're, they're, they're looking for my bike, but they're not going to get my bike because I keep my bike in my living room. But anyway, we'll get back to this story another time, but this is B&Q, so I'm going to go shopping now. See you next time.